So hi, um, my name is Chi Hao, and I'm with Sparrow Ragu. Uh, along with Arnoff, we form Group 3. Um, today we'll be presenting our FYDP project, which is on laser-activated optoelectronic street camera. So here's the overview of what we'll be going to over today. So motivation. So basically, um, our supervisor, Hermine, who unfortunately isn't here today, but um, he studies uh, time-resolved spectroscopy. So this could be used to look at the structural dynamics of molecules um, for really fast processes and like reactions, for example. And uh, basically, in order to like probe these kind of reactions, you need a very short electron pulse on the order of 100 femtoseconds. Um, so being able to characterize this short amount of time is very hard, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, so making this advice will be very useful for his equipment calibration for future research. So go over a little bit about the background of the street camera. So it uses a photo switch, which basically once the laser hits the semiconductor, it will generate um, excitons, which will basically lower the resistivity of the uh, semiconductor and this closes the circuit. Um, you'll get a damped oscillation and it's a, t it's a time varying field, right? So depending on when the electron beam travels between the two plates, it will be deflected at a different position. And then so basically we're taking a very hard to measure time uh, measurement and we're breaking it and we're, and we're converting it into like a spatial measurement, which is a lot easier to do. Um, so we have a little animation basically going over like the operation of the device. So first, um, say we have an electron pulse and there's a field that deflects it. It gets captured on the phosphor screen. Um, we have another pulse and here when the field is around zero, it doesn't get deflected as much. And last, we get a third measurement and um, of the electron pulse. So um, because you can see the, it's pretty linear within this graph for, uh, for, the, for this damped cosine basic function, uh, you can make a really good like linear approximation on um, basically on the sensitivity of our device. So for example, in this, using these numbers, we have a 50 picosecond uh, gap between the two pulses and that for like say 100 pic pixel uh, 100 pixel displacement, we can get a sensitivity of about 20 pixels per picosecond. And, um, and then with that information, we can basically measure the pulse. So if you think about it, even though it is one pulse of electron traveling, right, it'll still get stretched out because the first electron of the pulse will experience a slightly different field compared to the last electron entering the plate. So there will be a slight, you know, um, there will be a slight difference in displacement and this will elongate the pulse. And once, so we can basically measure the pulse elongation and say we get two, pi, uh, two pixels that will correspond to, with our sensitivity measurement, around 100 femtoseconds. So um, there are a lot of papers already published on street camera uh, designs. And um, basically, uh, there will be the basis of what we'll be designing. Um, here you can see a basic circuit of what the device composed of. So you have a pulse source, uh, 1.5 kilovolts, and um, it basically that charges the place up to its initial conditions. Once the laser activates the switch, the, you can see the impedance in that loop is a lot smaller than the resistors outside the decoupling resistors. So most of the current will be trapped in there for a couple of oscillations before it damps out. And then, um, so yeah, and then that will basically change the frequency. So the frequency, the resonant frequency we know is given by one over square root LC. The damping coefficient is R divided by 2L. And um, the damping oscillation is basically the difference of the two quantities squared. So um, the resistance is a function of time, right? The carrier lifetime of the gallium arsenide. So that would change. And um, basically if we want to improve our device, we want to have very high frequency and very high amplitude. 
So that will, because what we want to do is maximize that slope that we were talking about in the previous, uh, in the previous slide. And um, so in order to do that, you can either improve the field or improve the, amp or improve the frequency or also increase the field, right? We're already using a 1.5K electron volt source. Um, and uh, the separation distance between the two plates are actually only 300 microns. So that generates a really big field. We don't want to go too big because um, you know, that might cause problems with breakdown and other issues. So um, those are our limits. And uh, in terms of frequency, yes, we just want to, in order to maximize the omega D, we want to reduce all L, C, and R. All right. So for the customer requirements, we have three main requirements that our device requires. Okay, the, it, the first requirement, it has to be compact and it has to be sensitive enough to be used by uh, Harman's group for his experiments. The second requirement is the photo switch has to be designed in a way that it can form proper contact with the circuits. Those are one of the key challenges as well, optimizing that. And lastly, the device uh, has to be reasonably cheap and easily uh, reproduced. So for future, if uh, future devices are needed, they can be replicated. Okay, so as mentioned, some of the key challenges that uh, George mentioned earlier is the electrical breakdown. So uh, two, two of the biggest components we're concerned of breaking down are the capacitors and the photo switch themselves. Possible solutions we aim to, uh, to avoid this issue is first is using a pulse source. Uh, the papers currently say around 50 nanoseconds of, of a pulse input. Another uh, solution to uh, solving this electrical breakdown could be the way the photo switch is uh, connected to the device and the geometry of it. And as well, the device will be operated in a vacuum and the plates will be made out of refractory metal so the capacitor plates themselves can handle the high voltage. Another issue, as mentioned earlier, is the bonding with the gallium arsenide. So that's uh, one main concern. The way we often choose to solve this would be using ohmic contacts and uh, potentially wire bonding or contact bonding. And another key challenge would be a plate separation. This one isn't as uh, hard to fix as the others. So the way we aim to, use, to uh, fix this issue is to use a uh, 300 micron spa uh, separator or spacer. Okay, so George will now uh, discuss the simulations we've done. So um, we basically did two types of simulation. One for circuits, we did P-SPICE, and the other one we look at the uh, plate geometry using COMSOL uh, multiphysics. So that's the circuit you can see that we simulated on P-SPICE. Uh, there's a pulse source, a 1.5K. Uh, um, yeah, and then there's another pulse pulse source that activates the voltage control switch. So that's how we control the switching for the um, gallium arsenide photo switch. Um, so on the next slide, we can see some of the results that we got. So the first one just shows um, the current. So it's pretty high, as you can expect, for a brief amount of period. Um, and that might be a concern if we're doing wire bonding. But um, over here, we measure the frequency. So after the photo switch has been activated, this is the discharge across the capacitor plates. And then lastly, we took a Fourier transform of that, and that gives you around 5 gigahertz of uh, frequency. So next, uh, we did COMSOL simulation of different geometries. Um, and uh, we basically found a capacitance value of 0 0.34 picofarads, which is only um, 6 d uh, femtofarads off of you know, our parallel plate approximation. And then I'll be talking a bit maybe about our photo switch design and fabrication. So we used undoped gallium arsenide substrate. And um, then this was taken into the clean room. And uh, so it was, so it was cleaned using um, HF and um, like RAC1, RAC2 uh, solution. Then um, we deposited, it, or we did, so we spun photo resist. We used a massless lithography, so that was able to save us some money because we didn't have to buy a custom-made um, chromium mask. 
then uh, did the e-beam deposition of nickel, germanium, gold. And um, so, yeah, these materials were chosen because, well, nickel forms very good uh, adhesion, and germanium gold is to form, like, a good shocky barrier to transport electrons. Um, and we want to transport electrons as opposed to holes because electrons have, like, 20 times the mobility in iron arsenal as opposed to holes. This whole thing was annealed in nitrogen, which was kind of a mistake. It should have been argon, but um, hopefully that didn't matter because the nitrogen is pretty inert, and I don't think it would react to form gallium nitride, I don't think. And uh, everything else was cut uh, using a diamond scriber to form the plates, and here's the, basically the photo switch cut up. You can see that some of it broke and managed to salvage some of the rest. All right, so for the street plate design and fabrication, I was tasked with that. Um, so we, as mentioned earlier, we chose refractory metals, uh, titanium, so to prevent them from the potential breakdown. Another metal we were considering using was tungsten. However, uh, we, when we ordered the tool, the titanium came in sheets, and that was able for us, that was easily uh, cut into shape for us as opposed to the tungsten rods. So with uh, our prototypes, we decided to just work with the titanium instead. So uh, for the machining process of the plates, we first made an AutoCAD design, as you can see there, of multiple different designs that were also tested on Comstall. We weren't too sure of the, like, the best uh, designs that would work for our device, so we decided to make multiple. Okay, so for the machining then, we used a water jet to uh, cut the outline of the devices. Now, because a water jet isn't the most precise uh, device, or machine to use for this, after the cutouts were made, we decided to uh, do some milling to, uh, f for more fine details and straighter edges. Afterwards, we uh, sanded our plates in order to smooth the surface and make, keep it as parallel as possible. So the PCB itself, um, it must be able to handle uh, high vacuum and high voltage. Um, so we use an SHV, so safety high voltage connector instead of the standard BNC one. And um, we also use high voltage surface mounted resistors, so 250 volts uh, per resistor each. That will come up to 2K for eight of them. And then, um, of course, we want to try to reduce the tra track length to minimize impedance and also increase width. Um, there's also, because we're working with high voltage, you also want to have like, a good clearance on your board. Now, for assembling the PCB with all our components, it was fairly simple to do, as most of the components can be uh, simply soldered on, as seen in this picture. Uh, so the custom mounts, once the resistors were soldered on first, as they were the easiest components to uh, assemble onto the device, a custom mount was made for the SHV connector, as you can see in this picture. It's, that's made out of brass uh, to simply hold the SHV in place and have it soldered onto the circuit and ground it as well. Next, once the BN, uh, SHV connector was uh, set up, we then connected the, uh, first we connected the photo switch, and this one we decided to use soldering because we didn't have the wire bonding set up in the beginning. So uh, we simply soldered the photo switch on. This one isn't the best device, however, that's for the first prototype. After the photo switch was assembled onto the PCB. We then assembled the capacitor plates on. So we did this by placing them in, in the approximate position. Then we had a 300 micron spacer that we measured with the caliper placed between the capacitor plates. We then uh, uh, forced the capacitor plates together and the spacer made sure they had the 300 micron separation we required, and then we tightened the bolts to hold the capacitor plates in place, and then simply remove the spacer. Okay, so for validation tests, we performed uh, multiple resistance tests to verify that our photo switches were operating. So the first two tests were done on two different uh, photo switch designs, one without the ohmic contacts and one with the ohmic contacts, and you can see the resistance is measured there. Then two other tests were performed with uh, different uh, laser systems, one with a helium neon laser and one with a, a IR laser at 288 milliwatts, and we can see the difference in uh, resistances as well. So yeah, the 200K kilo ohm, that's like the average that you measured. 
because this is a pulse laser and that was a continuous laser. So um, it's much lower than that when, when the actual pulse is hitting the photo switch. This is a oscilloscope measurement of simply to see that our circuit was connected properly. So we expected to see some sort of voltage drop across the plates. When it's pulse, yeah. And uh, in this example, we only used a five volt source since the laser set, the equipment setup wasn't uh, set up in the lab yet. So we are, this is the only hands we could have got, uh, the only voltage source we were able to get our hands on. This is uh, simply the Excel plot of the Voltage drop of the oscilloscope image. This frequency is due to the, um, the reflection reflection within the wires itself, but not our device. But yeah, the, the oscilloscope was only able to capture up to 500 megahertz, um, which is a lot less than the gigahertz. And for verifying the plate separation, after we used the caliper to measure the spacer, we also did an optic, used an optical microscope to measure the distance between the plates is exactly uh, 300 microns. So here, each division is around 10 microns, and there's, and each uh, large dark line is 100 microns. So since there's three of them, our plates are separated at approximately 300 microns. Okay, this is a quick uh, cost analysis of our uh, device. Most of the, the most expensive components of our device are simply the plates and the the, the metal plates and the SHV connectors, as you can see, that cost over half of our budget. Okay, so the conclusion from our device, we said we made two prototypes, but these are two displayable prototypes. We made multiple prototypes with a compact design, so we were able to meet our primary requirement of a compact design and prototypes that were easily manufacturable. However, for the frequency, we we were only able to get simulation results, not conclusive results just yet, to say if the device operates at a targeted frequency. If the device uh, performance compared to uh, commercial products should be around 100 femtoseconds compared to the two picoseconds that commercial products work with, that, which is about the same, for uh, much uh, less in cost. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So for future steps and recommendations from uh, what we, uh, observe when creating our device. Uh, first, we must perform the optical experiment in a vacuum. To, that way we can conclusively say what, if our device operates at the five gigahertz frequency that we, uh, we, expected. we expected to see. The next uh, recommendation we make is to improve the connections with the gallium arsenic uh, ohmic contacts. In that last image you guys saw, we used soldering, but we know that's not a good enough contact for, uh, for the photo switch. So we uh, expect to try, we recommend trying wire bonding and metallic contacts as a, so a contact source. Another uh, recommendation is to potentially try using MBE grown gallium arsenic wafers as a, opposed to the current design we did. And uh, for the capacitor plates, we want to see if the tungsten will have any different uh, effect than the titanium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That concludes our presentation and we're open to uh, Questions. These are acknowledged.